Chikanoing Hazo is a brand new 4 star Animo Catalyst user coming to us here in Genshin Impact 2.8. He's also the first male Catalyst user that we've ever gotten, and although he isn't breaking the meta anyway, he has a certain uniqueness and fluidity of gameplay that a lot of people are personally enjoying, and therefore are all finding themselves wanting to build him. Hi, my name is Blossoms and welcome to another Genshin Impact build video, and today we are going to be going over Chikanoing Hazo, his weapons, his artifacts, his constellations, and doing a general showcase as well. But before we get into any of that, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this kind of content, it helps me out a ton and I really appreciate it. But let's talk about Hazo. First off, we'll briefly talk about his kit. It's relatively simple, so we'll try to be a little brief here. I did say he is our first male Catalyst user, but he isn't like your normal Catalyst users where he uses a bunch of spells. He prefers to use his martial arts, so he does a punching and kicking style uh, catalyst normal attack and it's very very fun and a major reason as to why a lot of people are really enjoying him as it just feels really good to do. Now naturally since he is a catalyst user these are doing animo damage which means he's going to be up close and personal and swirling a lot. Hazel's also got an E skill that has a tap or hold function that builds up stacks to a max of four. These are called declension stacks and each one builds up more damage the more stacks you get. And uh, you can see at level 8 here, you get 91% additional damage per declension stack, which gets really crazy. But if you get all four of these stacks, you get something called the convi uh, Conviction Effect. And this will actually make the E skill 1 stronger and have a larger AoE. And you can see it also has its own bonus here. So if you get all four stacks, not only are you getting four stacks at 91% at level 8 here, you're also getting an additional 182% damage bonus. Uh, with an already good skill damage modifier. So yeah, he has a lot of front-loaded damage compared to other Animo units. And the cooldown here is only 10 seconds, which is pretty nice. And the de declension stacks themselves have a long duration on them, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to worry about, you know, missing your opportunity to use them that much. He also has this elemental burst that is supposed to be his sort of uh, crowd control aspect to Animo. His crowd control is very, very lacking though, especially when you compare him to units like Kazuha or Sucrose. But this does AoE Animo damage. This also has elemental absorption for Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, and Electro. And essentially, you do a big kick, and this kick does pretty solid damage itself, and it sucks in enemies, and then it does a burst of the absorbed element, which is pretty cool. And this, of course, does cause swirls and whatnot. This also has a low energy cost of 40 and a cooldown of 12, which is very nice because you can spam this out as long as you have some solid energy recharge going. And while it isn't the best crowd control, it is still crowd control, and I do find it very satisfying to utilize. Now, because using the hold function on his E skill takes a very long time to build up all four stacks, he does have a redeeming quality here in the Paradoxal Practice, where Shikanoing Hazo activates a swirl reaction, which is going to be happening a lot since it happens on his normal attacks. Uh, this gives him a declension stack and that can happen every uh, 0.1 seconds. So a lot of the time you're not even going to be holding your heart stopper strike. You're more than likely going to be causing swirls to get your stacks up and then unleash a full power heart stopper strike to deal as much damage as you can. Hizo also has a supportive function to him called penetrative reasoning. And essentially whenever you use your E skill, you give everybody on the team 80 elemental mastery for 10 seconds. And yes, that duration is the same as the cooldown on the ability. So you can keep it up indefinitely, which is very nice. This does exclude him though. He doesn't get this elemental mastery bonus, but it is still 80 elemental mastery and that is very nice. He also decreases stamina consumption for your party members by 20%, which is always a very nice passive talent. This is one of my favorite passive talents. Personally, it's very good for overworld exploration and just saving you some stamina on your dodges oftentimes giving you an extra dodge or two. So Hazo's kit is very unique in the sense that he is a martial artist and you're an up close animo unit and he has a lot of front loaded damage compared to a lot of our other units that are much more supportive in their capabilities. And while Hazo does have some supportive functions to him, he doesn't excel at them in the same way a lot of other characters do like Sucrose. His crowd control also isn't really that amazing either. So using him as an animo support really isn't as efficient in my opinion, and he is much more oriented to be an on-field character or driver character with a lot of other units supporting them and him swirling them as much as he possibly can. So while although you can certainly have him as a sub DPS sort of option to where you just put him on the field for a couple seconds to do his E skill and his elemental burst, I highly recommend to get the most out of him to have him more as an on-field driver as his supportive capabilities aren't nearly as strong as somebody like Sucrose or Kyle was and if you have either of them they're gonna outclass his support functions but as an on-field driver he is extremely fun 
and all that front-loaded damage makes him a very satisfying character to play. Moving on to artifacts, there's only two real four sets that I want to talk about. The Viridescent Venner is still the uncontested best set for pretty much every Animo unit in the game, this being due to the fact that it gives you 15% Animo damage bonus, increases your swirl by 60%, and then reduces elemental resonance of your opponent by 40% uh, for, or resistance, not resonance, for 10 seconds. This has been one of the best sets in the game since it came out for Animo and it continues to do so. So what's the other set I want to talk about? Well, it's a little bit of a niche set, that being the four piece Thundering Fury. And of course, Hazo doesn't utilize the electro damage bonus at all because he doesn't do electro damage. However, the four piece set here is very interesting and might be what you want to use depending how you want to use Hazo, because when you cause an overloaded electro charge and superconduct, you decrease his elemental skill cooldown by one second. So these reactions are already dealing a little bit more damage because of this set, but also you're reducing the cooldown on his E skill, which is generally the thing that you're waiting for anyway. And uh, that's pretty nice. So if you want to punch as much as possible and have him on the field as much as possible, this might be a route for you. It isn't going to be as strong like numerically or mathematically as something like the Viridus and Venner, but it does have a certain fun factor to it that I think is certainly worth mentioning. Now, however, if you just can't get your hands on some decent four piece Viridus and Venner sets, Despite the fact that Hazo actually has very flexible main sets that we'll talk about later, but if you just can't get your hands on those, of course things like the Wanderer's Trooper find, the 4 piece even, isn't that bad considering you might want to be charge attacking with him because his charge attacks do have a different kind of internal cooldown so you can swirl with them if you're uh, changing them out with your normal attacks. This also gives you elemental mastery which is nice, but you can also of course split that with something like the Emblem of Severed Fate to get your burst more often if you just don't have any recharge substats. Or you can split that with something like the Viridescent Venner. Those are all A-OK. -okay. There are plenty of things that you can split up and have a good result. But realistically, you're going to want to be aiming for a four-piece Viridescent Venner if you want the best result. Okay, let's talk about some main stats, and luckily this is one of the most flexible parts of Hazo's kit, and one of his strengths, a lot of people are going one of two ways when it comes to building Hazo, and that is the traditional attack damage bonus and crit rate or crit damage type of build, otherwise known as the ADC build, and a lot of people are just going full elemental mastery main stats. And these are the two most common ways to do it. And the full Elemental Mastery main sets, I will say, will typically be outpacing the ADC type of build in terms of damage over a period of time because Swirl can just get really out of control. However, I personally really like the ADC build because of the fact that this just seems to be what you want to do with this kit anyway. He has extremely high multipliers on his skill and a very good multiplier on his burst and you can make them deal some really big damage. And uh, I just feel like you're doing his kid justice if you go for ADC, but you can go for either one you want. They're both going to do fantastically. And I did want to mention this as well, because Hazo's actual crowd control really isn't that strong. So being able to swirl multiple opponents while still very easy to do is not nearly as easy as it would be with somebody like Sucrose or Kazuha. And therefore, your swirls aren't going to be as crazy as it would be on those characters. So maybe just going for the attack damage bonus and crit rate might be a better route overall for you. And even though this build typically gets outpaced by Elemental Mastery, as I mentioned before, it's very easy to get a lot of Elemental Mastery from your substats or even your weapons, especially in the Catalyst category. We have some weapons that give a lot of Elemental Mastery, so that's something to think about as well. But regardless, he's going to be doing fantastically on either one of these sets, and you can even mix and match a lot of these main stats and still get fantastic results, and that's an amazing part of Hazo as well. You can even go like Elemental Mastery on the Sands here and continue to do Animo Damage Bonus and Crit Rate right here. That's all fine too. You can even do Double Elemental Mastery and then keep your Crit Rate here and have Crit Damage on your weapon or something. You're still going to be doing solid damage and getting plenty of Swirls. Most of them are going to be a pretty good build for Hazo. So I would just try to use the artifacts that have the best subsets you have for them and mess around with those and see how impactful they are in your Hazo. As for substats, this is where things are really going to matter because you're most often going to be making up for whatever you're lacking, but there is a top priority, that of course being Elemental Mastery. Whether you're going for that attack, damage, and crit build, or you're going full Elemental Mastery, more Elemental Mastery is always going to be good, especially on a swirl-based Animo character like Hazo, who's going to be getting that extra damage on his swirl anyway then you'll be doing more damage on his swirl with the elemental mastery so it is just going to be a good route to go but uh you're also going to want to be looking things for like crit rate and crit damage as well as attack percent and you're also going to want to have at least a couple of pieces with some decent energy recharge only maybe a couple rolls on some energy recharge 
uh, because he does have a low cost burst of 40, so it's very easy to get back, and it does have a low cooldown, so getting it off of cooldown really isn't that difficult, but that doesn't mean you can forego energy recharge entirely, unless maybe you have another animo unit on your team or something, because then they can battery him fairly easy. But yeah, you're still going to want a little bit of energy recharge, plenty of elemental mastery, crit rate and crit damage, and a little bit of attack percent. All of those combined are going to make you a fantastic Hazo. As for the artifacts I'm using for all of the gameplay in this build video, I'll go over each and every one of them so you know how I got to where I am at on my Hazo. Also wanted to mention one more thing when it comes to main sets and choosing your main sets, keep in mind that Hazo's hidden ascension bonus is animo damage bonus. So he's already getting quite a bit from that. And as you can see on his attributes here, that is going to be putting him at 79% animo damage bonus by default, at least at level 80 here. So that's pretty sweet as well. And that's one of the reasons I really like the attack damage and crit because it just makes your numbers so big because you're already getting a huge damage bonus there. But this also means you can forego this entirely and maybe put elemental mastery there if you just have that piece. As I said, he's very flexible on the main stats and that's one of the best parts about him. Fortunately, weapons for Hazo have a lot of flexibility. He can go for a lot of different things. Naturally, a lot of the five star catalysts are going to be fantastic for him. You have plenty of options there and I would just accentuate your or build around some of those five star catalysts but if you are like most people you might not have one of the five star catalysts and he has plenty of four star options still the wood sith being one of the best and often outclasses a lot of the five stars due to its passive being so ridiculous especially at higher refinements because all three of the passives here are going to be good for hazo giving him attack elemental damage or elemental elemental mastery is fantastic while having a crit damage substat is really good but it isn't the only option, something like Sacrificial Fragments is probably my second pick here, and if I had it at higher refinements I might be using it myself, and that is because it gives him plenty of elemental mastery and it has a chance to reset his elemental skill whenever he uses it, however it's not a very good chance until you're at higher refinements like 4 or 5, and uh, the cooldown here also lowers as you refine it too. So I'd only really recommend this if you have it at like four or five, or maybe if you're just taking a chance, you want them on field all the time and you want to do your punches as much as possible, then this is going to be an option for you. It just becomes significantly more consistent at higher refinements, but overall it's still a fantastic option regardless. He also can make use of something like the Solar Pearl, and it has the added bonus of looking fantastic with his outfit, which we all know is very important. But that aside, it has crit rate as a substat. It increases the damage of his elemental burst and elemental skill and his normal attacks by using one or the other, so it really lends itself to his kit already. It's almost as if they've made his color design, you know, work with the Solar Pearl just for this. So this is going to be a fantastic option for him as well. So while five stars and these four stars, I think, are some of the best picks, you can, of course, still go for other things. Something like Eye of Perception isn't going to be awful. Something like Dodoco Tales isn't going to be awful. And something like Map of Mare is probably going to be your best free to play option, considering it also has an Elemental Mastery substat. Especially at higher refinements, this can lend itself to deal some really solid damage. It just doesn't have as much Elemental Mastery as something like the Sacrifice official fragments but it does have a higher base attack which really isn't that bad for him because he is going to be taking advantage of that high base attack if you are building him for something like attack percent and the elemental damage and whatnot while still getting a little bit of elemental mastery here so this is a good option too but i would still pick something like widsith sacrificial fragments or Sol solar pearl all before it but if uh, you just don't have any of those, or maybe you're using them on other units, this is still a uh, great option. All right, let's talk a little bit about Hazo's Constellations, because while none of them are necessary, they're all just kind of small quality of life type things. And the first one being nice because it increases your attack speed for a little while whenever you put them on the field. But he also gains a declension stack for free, which is very, very nice and uh, really helps you build up those declension stacks a bit faster. And you notice this effect has a cooldown of 10 seconds, like the declension or the elemental skill itself. So you're almost always going to be getting one free declension stack for free, which is very nice. He also has this C2, which is really good and probably one of my favorites, mostly because it increases the effectiveness of his actual crowd control. Now, don't get me wrong, this doesn't make his crowd control fantastic or anything, it just makes it better but it's still not good or anywhere near somebody like Kazuha or Sucrose's crowd control. 
but does certainly help him out. His C4 is an energy regain mechanic, and this is flat energy, so it isn't going to be like particle energy that's going to help out your team a bunch. So while this is nice and it does help him get his elemental burst faster, uh, it's certainly not necessary, especially at the low energy cost that the elemental burst is already at. But if you are really struggling with energy recharge, this allows you to be even more lenient, which is certainly nice. And then finally, he's C6. This is just a nice one because you get free crit rate and crit damage for his elemental skill that already does a ton of damage on its own. So now you're just going to be dealing more damage more consistently, which is, of course, always welcome, but certainly not a necessary thing to make him a good character. Now, Hazo is very flexible, and this just might be due to the fact that he's an animo unit who can do a lot of animo application. But we're going to talk about some of the pairings that I think are important to think about when you're considering building teams for Heizo. Now, of course, characters like Yalan or Xingqiu are going to be phenomenal for him because he's going to be doing his normal attacks to get swirls to build up stacks for his E skill. And when you're using somebody like Yalan or Xingqiu, they're going to be applying a bunch of Hydro whenever you normal attack. So, of course, they're going to be phenomenal. Of course, other characters that have things that trigger on attacks or something are going to be really great, like Raiden Shogun. Whenever you deal damage, she does a little bit of Electro because of her E skill that Hazo can then swirl, which is always going to be pretty solid. And uh, another character like Fischl is going to be a really good slot there. And also wanted to talk about Toma and just go on a little bit of a tangent here. Of course, Toma is going to be solid for Hazo because Toma does off-field pyro application and has a continuously refreshing shield whenever you normal attack. And uh, it also, you know, buffs the shield or whatever and Hazo of course is going to be able to swirl that but I want you to think about when Dendro comes around that Hazo, Toma and maybe a Dendro unit all might be a pretty good team as a burning team because you'll although we might not be able to swirl Dendro we probably won't be able to we will still be able to swirl Toma so if we get a Dendro character that actually does pretty good area of effect Dendro application then you could have some sort of crazy burning team with Hazo, Toma and X Dendro unit and I wanted to put that out there for you guys before Dendro came out, just so you might be able to prepare for it. Then, of course, characters that have abilities that follow you around are all going to be fantastic as well. Kaya will be great for some sort of freeze team. Shangli will be great for any vaporize or melt team. And then Kuki Shinobu will be good for any sort of electro team because it is all going to be that sort of close range off field elemental application that follows you around despite where you might be. Hazos, of course, can be great for freeze teams as well, especially because of the fact that none of his hit inherently shatters your opponents. One of the issues that Kazuha often has is that his plunge attacks shatter opponents, but Hazo doesn't shatter with his E skill or his elemental burst, allowing you to keep up the freeze indefinitely. And you can kind of mix and match whoever you want. This is going to be a solid team where you get an off field application with Yulan and Kokomi for Hydro, and then you have Kaio who follows around with his elemental burst. Or you could easily have Ganyu here, you could have Ayato here, you could have Chong Yun here, although Chong Yun can't infuse Hazo, you get a Rosaria here. All of those are going to be pretty good options just to apply freeze, however, you can most efficiently do so. Hazo, of course, as I mentioned, is going to be good in electro charge teams as well. Having plenty of off field hydro application options that we do is really solid. Now we have Kuki Shinobu that can follow around and apply electro, or you could use somebody like Raiden Shogun to apply that electro. You get a Yai Miko in here. You can have pretty much any sort of electro charge team that you like to run here. And Hazo is simply going to facilitate a good team for that because you could swirl the electro and hydro, debuffing the enemies while applying the element everywhere all the time. Beto's really good in these sorts of setups too, especially since Hazo's crowd control really isn't all that fantastic. Having Beto's elemental burst can be really, really good for you just to have more of that uh, AoE kind of effect. Overall, Hazo's a really well-designed unit. He doesn't break the game or anyway, but he has a fun and interesting playstyle that are making a lot of people want to build him, which is pretty hard to do considering how strong the cast of Animo characters already is. So let me know in the comments section down below if this build guide helped you out, how you're building your Hazo, how many constellations you managed to snag from the banner, and if you've made it this far in the video, an extra special thanks to you as you're helping support the channel and I really appreciate it. But other than that, I hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of your day. My name's Blossoms, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.